Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. What up? What's good, everybody? It's your boy BQ and your boy TW. This is the Cool Factor Mailbag Show. We haven't dropped one of these in a while. It's been it's been weeks, maybe even months. I don't really know, but we did say when this first came out that it wasn't going to be a weekly occurrence. We're trying to go bi-weekly, um, not bi-monthly, not like the Impact Republic <laughs> pod, pod, podcast I do with with Mike. Shout out, mm. shout out to Mike. Him and I. But are is 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 that one at least a scheduled bi-monthly? It was is, no. Is it, it was bi-monthly scheduled. on purpose? <laughs> no, no. It was scheduled monthly, and and our schedules are. Yeah. We just can't do it, man. It's it's a it's a pain. He's on the it, California it, time and all that. It, uh, it's it's rough. You know rough. what though? I I say this to the Impact audience. Listen, we love you guys. We love Impact Wrestling. We love the show. If you guys want these shows regularly, if you guys want these shows to be a priority, y'all need to. You know, look, make it worth our time. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's a uh, there's a donation box somewhere. Okay, <laughs> BQ, point them in the right direction. And it is what it is. It is what it is. We we're, we're grown ups. We have jobs and families, and those things have to come first, right? This is something we do for fun. You know, so um, if this was something we were getting paid for, okay, <laughs> we'd be we'd make sure it is in your inbox same time every week. But, <laughs> But you, you know, look, but look, look, listen, look, so the point is, this is a gift. Don't complain. This is a gift. So this is the mailbag show where we take some of your questions. We talk about them. We're not pro wrestling experts. We're not in the business. So you might say, Speak what for yourself? How I'm does expert. that? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you might ask yourself, what qualifies you to answer questions about impact wrestling? But, you know, like the things we like to point out is TW does work in television. He's a television producer on a major network. I'm no expert, but I am, uh, you know, I do have my education in marketing and business. Right now I'm going to school for a small business administration, uh, you know, social media and stuff. Like these are all things that we know and we have um, knowledge in. So, And, and I, think, I think above all, we're fans, right? We're fans. So like, you know, I think that makes us, we're, we're coming from the same place y'all are. Like we, we, we might have different perspectives because of our, you know, professional experience or whatever. But um, at the end of the day, we're watching the shows just like you guys, you know what I mean? And we're just, you know, we're offering perspective and maybe an insight that's a little bit different from yours. Um, and like, I've been watching, gosh, I've been watching wrestling. Oh my God. I just turned 40. Oh God. It's weird saying that out loud. <laughs> I just turned 40. And, uh, and, and, I've probably been watching wrestling for about 35 years. <laughs> right? Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, we're, 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 we're fans, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, we're just, we're just, we're, we're here to be your voice. Okay. We're here. And part of being your voice is answering your questions. So BQ without further ado, do you want to. Let us get into this. And uh, you know, TW and I do talk about very small details where a lot of people think we are nitpicking at things that don't matter. But what we're really doing is taking our own experience and, and we're actually peeling back the curtain for what we know successful television shows and companies do talk about and do behind the scenes. We're just bringing that light, light to you guys. So it comes off to, you know, a lot of listeners that this is really nitpicky shit, but it is stuff that's important behind the scenes that just doesn't normally get talked about. So there's a lot of people who really do appreciate that from us. Um, there's some who don't, that's fine. I would say this too, like, tell us where we're wrong. Tell us where we're wrong. Like we're here, like, we're not here to like crap on impact. As a matter of fact, if you guys listen, you know, the whole reason we do this show is because we want it to be a voice that wasn't, you know, um, motivated to crap on impact because we're, you know, Meltzer stands or whatever, you, whatever the case may be, right? Like we got into this so there, so we could, be a voice as I'm sure the, you know, dozens of impact podcasters, you know, all feel the same way. You know, we got into this so that we could be a voice that, you know, wants to, uh, wants to not, not necessarily like curate your experience, but talk about it in a way where you're going to be excited about the thing you're watching every week. You know what I mean? Like you, so instead of like just dumping on it, because a lot of people just dump on it. Like I've heard so many podcasts, whenever they mention impact wrestling, as a matter of fact, when I do uh, um, my podcast, talk about pie, 
uh my sister told me she was like yo when you start talking about impact i turned the pot off <laughs> i was like <laughs> my own sister told me that and a lot of people feel that way right they're just they're just not interested they just look at it however they look at it and it's just not a thing so again the whole reason that we started doing that is because we want people to be able to talk and listen and enjoy stuff about impact wrestling but like but we're grown-ups, right? We're not just fanboys. We're not just going to be like, oh, my God, did you see Josh Alexander? What a suplex. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not, that's not what we're doing here. And there are places you can go get that. There's places you can go get that. And by all means, go, right? Go. But if you're here for, you know, grown-up, fun, intelligent discussion, you know, where we talk about the stories, we talk about the, you know, what we like, what we don't like, then welcome. Right, you know, and... You and I are sports fans too, and and I think there's a good portion of, of the wrestling audience, not all of them, that don't watch sports sports. And when I'm sitting here and you know I'm talking with my brother about the Clippers or something, and they lose ten games in a row and then they win, we're not, we're, hey, we made the right, eighth right. seed, yo, you know, <laughs> like we're sitting here like, yo, these motherfuckers, right? Get, you know, we need a backup point guard. We need like we're we're sitting here complaining, but it but it is. It's for the we want better. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's Chargers, we need a damn defense uh, or offensive line. You know this and this and this. we need that. It's not that we hate. I hate my teams, but I acknowledge what doesn't work and what's good and what needs improvement. You know, so I think people don't look at wrestling like that. They say, well, if you like the company, you should just like everything they do. But you know, you can't be just happy with everything. So yeah. let's let's get into these. Um, if you guys want to ask questions, the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook is uh, what you want to look up. Uh, you got to answer a couple questions so that I know you're not a spammer or bot, whatever. Um, and uh, one of them is, is we own the night a good song and your only option is no. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, check us out, Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. So uh, we got a handful of questions here. Uh, kind of put these together last minute, and then, you know, we might go through YouTube if we got a little bit of time and see what uh, people are rapping about. So, uh, Johnny Smith, he asked, would you prefer, this is, whoa, would you prefer if AEW or WWE bought Impact if that meant there would be better marketing and funding put into the company, or would you rather let Impact stay the way it is? I think that's a great question. Yeah, that's Actually, a- I- I think that's actually a really good question, right? So like like the the essence of the question is like, you know, if you really want to see this product flourish, are you willing for it to become uh, an offshoot of something else uh, so that the product can flourish? And my gut answer is no. <laughs> I, my gut answer is, I think a part of what originally attracted me to impact is uh, also a, a, a part of what attracted me to AEW. Um, and a part of what attracts me to all wrestling is like, I like stuff different, man. I, I like stuff. I like stuff to be different. I like different flavors. Right. And so, you know, impact does what they do really well. AEW does what they do really well. WWE does what they do really well. And like, it's cool. I don't want to feel like I'm watching the same thing every time. Right. Like, um, you know, BQ mentioned a couple of weeks ago how, you know, the new version of NXT just feels like Monday Night Raw with people who you don't know, right? And so, like, uh, so again, right? And 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 by the way, the more and more we see these Ring of Honor shows, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, yeah, right. I was just going to say that it's going to feel just like an episode of AEW that you know what that that whatever is 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 a little less. So, I don't know, man. I like the variety. You know, as much as I want to see impact play in front of big loud energetic crowds like i like impact man like i i i know the show has its flaws but i think impact is absolutely phenomenal with some of the stories they are doing right now i'm really enjoying you know some of the stuff that i'm seeing right now like what i'm seeing like with you know jonah and pco i don't see that on any other show what I'm seeing with Moose and Josh Alexander, I don't see that on any other show. You know, um, the Deanna Perrazzo champ champ challenge is a little bit derivative of, you know, Kenny Omega's belt collector thing, but it's different enough where I like it. And I'm not seeing anything like that on any other show right now. So like, 
I like what Impact is doing, man. I like what Impact is doing. And I like having that different flavor. So no, man, like I don't want to, you know, like, and, and here's the thing too. I, and I'm trying to say this to like, um, to, to, I'm trying to say it's like with all sensitivity, um, like being on, on like WWE, if, if Impact bought WWE, right? Would they feel, I'm sorry, if, if Impact, if WWE bought Impact, um, you know, they would WWE eyes it, right? Like, so, yeah. like, so, so would they still have, you know, uh, female wrestlers there who don't look like models? You know what I mean? Like, would they still have like, um, would they still have male wrestlers there who aren't in, you know, like, uh, super tip top kind of shape, you know, like, um, I, again, like the things that like make, make, make impact wrestling unique, right? Like, uh, I'm not saying that I necessarily want to like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with like a wrestler who's in the shape of like a Samoa Joe being like a top a top guy like Samoa Joe's in great shape. He's just not a bodybuilder. Right, you know right. There's saying? a difference between out of sh- yeah, being out of shape and right. like this is my body type, but I'm in I'm I am in shape. Exactly, exactly. That I think Diana Peraza was another example of that, right? Like she's not like she's not built like a model or a bodybuilder, you know what I mean? But like she can freaking go, man. Like she can wrestle, you know what I mean? Like she's a butt kicker and I love that. You know what I mean? Like I enjoy watching her. She's a she's a she's a a, a, a evil heel and I, I like it. I like it a lot, right? But like when you are working for a WWE, right? It's like everything feels like it has to fit in certain boxes you know what i mean and so i i like the things i like some of the things that you know that where where impact is a little less polished and i think that Mm kind of adds to the personality of the product yeah i think uh that's what worked with the tna stuff uh was was some of the stuff that was unpolished and kind of grittier uh that you know that that helped but it, it's a tricky question because I wanted Dixie Carter to sell TNA more than anybody. Mm-hmm. And now I realize, well, I actually liked that TNA better. Like the, I've always said the pop TV era, I, lo- I just loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that era better than what we have right now. Is it a better show? No. But for me as a viewer, like I enjoyed that stuff better. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of it was the, some of the aesthetics and, and things like that back then Josh Matthews was actually good on commentary as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, the, and the Pope obviously, but I wanted her to sell it more than anything. And then she did. And there were so many changes made to the business structure that I'm like, I'm not in love with this company. Now like I was, it's not mm-hmm. saying they were, they were for the, the worst. That's not what I'm getting at, but you got so many guys coming in per appearance, you know, you have stuff like Dan Lambert shows up one episode and like, Ooh, why is he here? And then we never hear from him again. And right, so right. it's like, there's stuff that there's no payoff. There's no, you know, just people are coming and going and it's hard. No one signed. It feels like no one signed and it's hard to like get as invested, you know? Um, but as you said, ring of honor is going to become an extension of AEW because Tony Khan is booking it. There's no, it doesn't matter how different you try to be. It, it's going to be the same thing because it's a, it's one person's vision. It's like if I cook steak one night and I cook chicken, it's just still my version of those meals. Right. You know, it might be a different, a, you know, a completely different meat, but the way I season, the way I cook, the, it, it's, it's all still kind of the same. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be different, but it's going to be the same too. So, really good that's a really good analogy i like that that's yeah really so <laughs> it you know it, it always just boils down to my style of cooking so yeah i would love someone to come in and like buy the company and be like yo you know we're gonna put money into this we're gonna you know um the anthem money is there but it's like part of what works for AEW is that tony khan's a public figure like he he makes it known you know, like when they, when they announced Samoa Joe at Ring of the Ring of Honor, like he made sure he was out there to let everyone know I signed Samoa Joe. Like he's not behind the scenes; he wants to take it all in. He wants to take credit for everything. You know, and uh, Impact doesn't have a face like that that owns a company where everyone's like, right, "Oh, right. we know Ed, who Ed Nordholm is." So yeah, it would be nice if someone came in and you know purchased it and you know uh, put a real machine behind it. But 
every time you do that, you're going to start losing elements that you really like and you really do enjoy. So, you know, that's something I kind of take for granted. There was a lot in the Dixie area that I really liked. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, even though the guys who've come in have made a lot of improvements, mm-hmm. some of the stuff I liked back then is now gone. That's you know, point. that's a really good point. So, and I think like of the things you mentioned, the number one thing that is like feels like a pet peeve to me <clears throat> is the whole like you mentioned feeling like nobody is signed. Like it <clears throat> like it feels like it like so for example, right? Like this is something we can we can dive into a little bit later or not at all if you want. But you know, there's a story making rounds about uh Nash Carter from WWE, the former what was his name in Impact? Zach Zachary know. Wentz. Zachary Wentz. I think I think they just called him Wentz. Right. The former the former Wentz from Impact, um, you know, being released from his NXT contract uh, over some 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 allegations, which we're not going to get into left or right right now. But um, but my first thought when when I when I when I thought about that was like, I think there's a great chance they pick up the phone and call Trey Miguel and be like, yo, when are you free? You know what I mean? And uh, because, like, think about that. If you're like people. Again, people love to pretend like they don't watch Impact or they have no idea about Impact. But if Trey Miguel shows up on NXT to be uh, Desmond Xavier's new tag team partner, people are going to go bananas. People yeah. are going to go bananas. And, like, it is what it is because they know that that it was a three-man group. Um, and so, like, uh, and so the, the w- w- when it comes to Impact, right, like, again – there's no feel. I say it all the time. Where's our guys? Where's our guys? And even when we identify people, we feel like are or should be our guys. It doesn't feel like the company gets behind them and wraps their arms around them and, and decides they're going to push them. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like <laughs> the number one identifier of somebody who, you know, like is like a WWE or bust type person is their love for Roman Reigns. You know what I mean? Like I, like Roman Reigns is great. Don't get me wrong. But I think people have this thing, man, where they just, whoever is the top person being pushed, they just lock in and, 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 and just sell themselves on how great this person is. And, and just like, ah, la, la, la. it's, it's one thing in like the public wrestling discourse that I just cannot stand. It's like, there's no, there's, there's, there's a real lack of objectivity when it comes to like, looking at whoever is the WWE top star. And, um, and and you can say the same thing about like AEW fans, right? Like the, the people who consider themselves like AEW loyalists, they will argue you down about how great Jungle Boy is. You know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah, I mean like, right, 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 right. So, so, but Impact I think doesn't allow us to have that. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they are doing everything they can, it seems like to uh let us know that josh alexander is the guy right but like but i just i just i don't don't know you know what i mean there's there's josh alexander there's moose like how many people actually are there that we as impact fans feel like we know will be there no matter what you know what i'm saying right it's very few you know and i made a comment on the um well, to answer the question fully, I, I want them to stay the way they are. I just want them to start valuing what needs to be valued. There's corners that they cut. Um, I'm sure they don't think they do, but that, or they don't think they're cutting corners, but they are. Um, I want them to fix those things. That's it. But yeah. um, I, I said this on the Cool Faster Factor podcast, the one I did by myself. I could be totally wrong on this, but with Josh Alexander, I think – a lot of impact fans are behind him because he's not being shoved down our throats, but he's being told this is our guy. And we haven't had a face of the company in forever. You know, that's why they still hold on to AJ style so much because we, since then who's, who's been like that, that face. And they've been, they, I don't say they've been desperately looking for a face. It doesn't feel that way, but it, right. They, I think they do want someone to be the face of the company, and they're like, this They've is... They've been desperately needing a face. Yeah, needing, right. And I think the fans have desperately been wanting someone. So I think they're attaching themselves to Josh, like, okay, he's the dude that's going to be here. But I don't... I don't know, man, because 
when I ask Impact fan, who's your favorite wrestler? It's like Josh Alexander pops up a lot, but as I've said before, I can't put him on my thumbnails on the channel because right. they will not get clicked. Right. I've I've tried and tried it. You know, when Lewis was on the channel, he was always Josh Alexander in the north and stuff. And every time he did content on him, it was the lowest performing stuff on the channel. Wow. I, you, I have enough data to back that up to tell you that was the case. So I don't know. It's weird. People are saying, oh, we like him. But I feel like they're just attaching themselves to him because he's he's the hope. He's he's right. we're, we're so desperate for a for a face. Um, mm. it, it's kind of like, man, when a, when a sports team drafts someone over number one overall and you're just like, yeah. we're, we're, <laughs> please, we're all in on this. please be good. Yeah. We're, OK, well, we're we're all in on you. You know, maybe it was a bad pick, but we're, hey, we got to hitch the wagon to you. So, so I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how it spiraled to Josh Alexander talk. But. No, no. Well, I mean, because again, like we were talking about, you know, some of the things about impact that, you know. Um, oh, we're not connecting to the. Right. Yeah. The, the, the whole thing. And, and like, because the reason why we got here, because the original question was, would we, would we, it's, it's almost like asking, right? Like would you let your ex go be happier with somebody who's a millionaire? You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Right. Um, like that, that's, 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 that's almost like a question. And my answer is maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but also I feel like, again, but the, the reason why we got here is because we were basically saying like, you know, there are things we like about impact, but there's also things we don't. And to the, the character piece like I was thinking about this right because watching the shows the tapings they did from Philly it felt obvious to me that there are you know fans who are excited about the show and they're active and they're you know like whatever but it, it made me ask like you know well is the problem that they don't they don't have like relatable characters right like is the is the problem that they don't have like the thing you know, they would always say about like Stone Cold Steve Austin is, oh, they see him as an everyman, you know, like, and I was asking myself, you know, like, is it that impact doesn't have characters that the average fan can get behind, right? Like, I, I, again, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, you know what I mean? Because I'm not, I, I am trying to figure out like, you know, why is it that these crowds at the impact shows are not like sitting up here, wilding out, going bananas, you know, chanting at everything. They do in spurts. But I'm asking myself, like, why doesn't it sound like an AEW show? You know? Like, I, I'm... I, and and, and I'm, I'm just, again, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what's the answer? You know, like, is it because... Obviously, we're not talking about number of fans in the arena. That's not what he's referring to. All right, well, I mean, but again, I'm, I'm down for all the answers, right? Like, is it because there's just less people there? Because I think there's shows with less people where it still sounds loud and lively. Yeah. You know? So my question is like, what is it that is going to be the linchpin that's going to make these fit? Because even the old ECW shows, right? Like they played those shows in front of tiny crowds, but they were loud and active. They were throwing things and cursing at people, right? Like, they, so it, it wasn't, it's not the size of the crowd, right? But so my question is like, how do you get, how does Impact get that crowd to be like loud and lively and rowdy? Like, how do they project that? That's to me, the number one thing I'd be trying to figure out if I was like an Impact uh, executive or or, or, or or any person working at Impact is like, how do we get these shows popping? That's the, that's the number one thing. How do we make this feel like something that people are going to want to come and watch? Well, we've uh, talked about this before. You know, someone's not going to bring a sign to the show if there's no chance it's going to be on the screen. You know, when you don't show us the fans, you show mm -hmm. us the same two or three people because they're always there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Jim Cornette brought this up about the Ring of Honor show. And I talked about this on the Cool Factor, too. And we'll start moving on to another question here. Because their, their setup is the same as Impact's. And he was mm -hmm. saying there was, you know, I don't know, he said 3,000 people there or something like that. He goes... Why didn't we see the people? He's like, why are we just staring at five rows of of fans behind the ring when you have all these people to show, to that are enjoying the show and there? Why why isn't the camera showing us any of that? Right. You know, so 
It's like even he pointed that out um, with the Ring of Honor stuff. So, yeah, you know, that's kind of what we talk about. Um, let's let's move on here. Uh, Randy Adams, he, he got a couple questions. With the jo- Josh contract issues over, do you think they'll finally go after someone like Blake Christian? So he was in the um, multitude of match, multitude, multiverse of matches. It is a multitude. <laughs> it is a multitude. Of <laughs> it is a multitude. That, that's what I think, you know, to go back to what you're saying, where we ha- have a hard time connecting sometimes with the guys on TV. And it's probably because so many people on, are on pay per appearance, but too many people are on the episodes in one way, shape, or form. And, you know, I kind of talked about the pop TV stuff. You know, they would announce the matches. There would be a couple backstage segments. But those were the wrestlers we were focusing on. And with this one, it's just like, there, there's just too much. That That's kind of my opinion. But, um, yeah, so I, I'm going to look at this a little bit different. The Josh contract issues, was that holding, do you think that was holding up impact from making moves for for real talent, oh, not real talent. That's I didn't mean real talent, but like for new talent elsewhere. Do you think you know they were going through this Josh thing? Do you think I was holding him up? You know, now that that's <laughs> over, are they gonna are they gonna be like okay, no, let's start bringing in some? Yeah. Some I, so I feel like that question assumes that uh that one that there was a level of legitimacy to the josh alexander you know not being on tv because it's contract thing which i don't agree with uh and and also it assumes that like he got some kind of big deal um which again i don't know maybe you know where that house moose rolled up to look kind of nice um, i think but, that's at nor home's home oh, personally. Okay. <laughs> yeah. i think so that's what I think. That makes more sense to me. Because <laughs> most didn't travel to Canada. Right, right, right. Uh, so, so. Well, I guess uh, Ed Norholm lives in Canada. Um, shit, I don't know. Where were they? Re- it could have been an Airbnb. Who knows? But it looked nice. It looked yeah, nice. Yeah, it did. If, if you're Impact and you want people to think your wrestlers make a lot of money, you do stuff like that. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, um. So to answer the question, no, I don't think that was holding up any type of contract deals. Um, I mean, listen, it's possible. It's possible. Like maybe, maybe, you know, again, like maybe, maybe there's a plan. It's gotten more like, yo, let me, let me get Josh Alexander paid so that we can, you know, uh, so we can start signing people. Um, I just don't know. I, I think that, I think impact is in an interesting place where like, if we're being, I, I don't need to see an influx of WWE releases in Impact. Yeah. They have done a good job telling stories with the people that are, 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 are largely unfamiliar to the worldwide audience. And so I'm good with that. Again, like, it's fun, man. Like, tell me a good story. I, it, it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, I will say this. To me, like, the, it's so repetitive the AEW thing, and by the way, this is something people used to say about TNA all the time, is like, you know, XYZ star who was released from WWE pops up on, you know, on AEW or or Impact, and first thing they do is, you know, grab a microphone and make reference to why it didn't work out in WWE and like all this stuff, and it just gets tired. It gets tired, and because ultimately there are a lot of people who are obsessed with the, you know, like the, the, the dirt sheet aspect of it all, the gossipy aspect of it all. But ultimately, like, we just want interesting stories. And, you know, like people used to leave one organization and show up in a new organization all the time. That's great for people, honestly, because like you, you keep your character fresh. You know what I mean? You 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 can get, you can play in front of a new audience and you might pick up some new things working with some new people. Like wrestlers working in a new place is not this big revolutionary thing. Like I know that everybody has been brainwashed by WWE's retelling of the Monday Night Wars to think that you know, a wrestler leaving one company and and working for another company is this big scandalous thing. But yo, that's just that's the way the it, the industry works. That's the way yeah. it has always worked. You 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 work in a territory for a certain amount of time. You finish up. 
you go somewhere else. Like that's the way it works, right? Um, so like, I, I don't need to see like Impact just sign everybody fresh off their WWE release. Like, listen, if you sign somebody, anybody, create a plan, bring them in. And, you know, like, listen, some of those people are like uh, rehabable, if that's a word. Uh, and, <laughs> and some yeah. of them aren't. Like, I didn't think Keith was going to be any great shakes, you know, when he showed up in Impact. And he hasn't been, you know, and they've tried. They've put Heath in you know, prominent positions, but like, the, I, there's just, there's, there's not much there. You know what I mean? There's not much there in terms of like, um, another guy like Sean Spears, right? Like they can, AW can use him however the hell they want. He is what he is. Okay. He's grits with no salt. Okay. Like there's no, like there's a, uh, uh, whatever is the comparison for a bland ass food. You know what I mean? Some people are just that, you know, like, um, you know, his, his first angle in, in AEW was being mad at Cody because Cody called him a good hand. What else is he? What else is he? <laughs> right? Like, you know, sometimes you are what you are, right? And so, like, um, so I don't need Impact to just go sign everybody from WWE. As a matter of fact, I would much rather see Impact keep signing people I never heard of and then introduce me and, like, Again, like, let's just develop some fun characters, man. Let's develop some fun characters. So so to get back to the question, no, I don't think the Josh Alexander contract negotiations were holding up the uh, influx of new talent. Um, two, I don't know who this influx of new talent is that you were hoping for. Who did he mention? Blake Christian? No, Blake Christian. Yeah, because now that he, you know, he did a couple impact dates and then he went to the uh, NXT for um, a cup of decaf and then they released them so yeah so i mean like yeah i i, I don't think that was holding anything up, up i think listen under the you know scott demore regime impact has done a fantastic job i think you know building stories from scratch that has been the strength of impact under uh scott demore and i like it i like it you know what i mean i i, I like it i think that like again you know each place is going to give you something different. You know what I mean? Like, you know, AEW is going to give you all your flippy dippy, all your, you know, ref, re, uh, references to dirt sheets and, you know, references to Japan and references to being the elite. Like, you know, that's what you're going to get from AEW. You know, WWE is going to give you, you know, they're, they're leaning back towards athletes and big stars and, and, and super high quality production. And you know, they're going to give you the best theatrics in, in, in the game, right? Like you, you know, you're going to get these things. So like, again, impact can hang its hat on storytelling. You know, that's one thing that, that has been, I think their hallmark is, 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 is really good, really strong storytelling. And they buoy that with really good wrestling. You know what I mean? Which by the way, I will say this, I just did something that I challenged the impact to do, which is define your brand, define your mission. They still have not done that because I don't think they know. I, and I, I don't either. I, I, that's not trying to talk shit, but the, the proof is there that they don't know the target audience or who they, they are targeting the wrestling audience. But, you know, you can't say, you can say with every company, this is the kind of fa fan that they're l looking for. And, exactly. you know, we can't say that with them. You're speaking to Heath, remember... Like three weeks ago, there was a big uh, him and Rhino. We're talking about how they're gonna win the tag team champions, yeah, yeah. all that shit. And then we haven't seen him on TV since. Uh, mm -hmm. Not building up any wins or anything like that. It's tough, man. It, it's tough. Like uh, WrestleMania time is like. I'm glad we're at a place now, where people aren't like shying away from WrestleMania, right? Like there is no comparison, right? Like WWE has established WrestleMania as the biggest event in the industry. And the whole, like, I honestly, for AEW, a company that considers itself to be a true competitor to WWE, for them to be, you know, uh, sucking from the teat of WrestleMania and doing shows at Wrestle, WrestleMania weekend and all that stuff, I thought that was an interesting look. We can talk about whether it was good or bad, but... I was just like, um, if you consider yourself a true competitor, to me, like, you're not going to be here, like, catching the, the WrestleMania runoff. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like, um, so I just, I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. 
Um, it took Impact a while to get involved with WrestleMania. Weekend. It did. It, but but the thing is, the difference is right. Like Impact needs any and all good press and publicity they can get. You know what I mean? And and they have for the longest time, right? So so Impact has always been right in a space where they need to be there, right? They need to be at the WrestleCons and doing anything they can to gain more fans. Um, but like, yeah, I thought that was interesting for AEW to 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 kind of be there too. Where was I going with this? Where was <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I know where I was going with this. So the thing about WrestleMania weekend is it it just, it wipes everybody out, right? Like you get rest, wrestling out at, uh, over WrestleMania weekend and for Impact to be in the midst of storytelling leading up to, you know, one of their big tentpole pay-per-views, it's tough because there's yeah. been like, we're because we're all I feel like we're all like a little out of it right now you know what I mean like we're all kind of taking a breath like just catching our breath from Wrestlemania weekend and then Impact was going to come back this week with that IPWF show which I thought was a horrible idea horrible idea and I'm glad they switched gears and decided to go with the multiverse of matches shows uh instead um because those shows were getting you know the, the matches from that show was getting a lot of praise um Although I do think it's a, a kick in the balls to everybody who paid for that show. Yeah, I paid it for it. For free. Yeah, to give it away for free a couple of days yeah. later. I'm like, like, why, why would you? Do I found myself doing that after a couple of pay-per-views, like saying to myself, like, why would I pay for this when they're just going to tell me everything that happened this week on BTI and on this week's episode of Impact? Because um, I think what you're paying for is the live show, the live experience, learning the results as they happen. You know, that that's that's what you're you know yeah so uh, so right so i mean you're, you're you're right you're right you're right um but there's still something to that i think there's, yeah i, think I know I, I agree with you and um we'll, we'll move on to the next question but what um i guess what i want to say to all that is this is the time of the year where they typically spin their wheels with who mm -hmm. they have waiting for that summer sl summer slam slam anniversary time where who are we going to sign I don't think that marketing campaign is going to work as good this year because when they started that AEW wasn't a thing, AEW's taken all those people. So uh, I think they're going to continue to do that, wait for Black Monday and say, who else can we get? And that's just going to be their anniversary thing every year. Yeah. But um, they typically seem to be spinning their wheels in the process. And especially because the Good Brothers contracts are coming up, they're trying to resign them. Uh, it's probably going to be a standstill for signing people for a little bit. Um, he also asked, uh, if we, is the production team really just a bunch of monkeys? Oh my God. Um, that's, a, that's a bit, that's a bit harsh, even though I, 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 find, I find it funny. Chris Jericho used to be like monkeys in the back. And I always thought that was funny. Um, I don't, I don't want to say that because we, we don't want to put these guys down too much, but I used this example a couple of podcasts ago. Some of you may have heard it, may have not. There's that girl on your Facebook page or your Instagram page that she posts her selfies and they're so overly airbrushed that there's no contour to the face. You know, when you get that app for the first time, let me download this app and airbrush and you do something to your face. The first time you do it, you're like, this looks incredible. And everyone else from the outside is just like, the fuck is that? But when you're messing with it for the first time, you think it looks great. And um, and that's kind of what I feel is going on a little bit. Whoever's doing a lot of post-production stuff, they see change. I'm, I'm going to change this slide, and I'm going to move this slide, and it, and we, and I see it doing something. Ooh, let's 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 push that, push it to the limit. Now it looks freaking great, and it doesn't. And when I used to do audio engineering, it took me years. I had a buddy who used to tell me kept telling me, dude, less is more, less is more. And I just had to keep messing with the EQ. No, I got I to gotta do this. This part's got an e got an echo, this and this. And he just kept, he kept, do less, do less, do less. And I couldn't do it because I wasn't experienced enough to realize less is better. And that that's just kind of the way it is. When you first start playing with shiny toys, you just keep pushing the limit. What, what, how else can I make this look? If I turn this knob and I turn this knob, I do this and this and this. And, and it took me years till finally one day, and the same with graphic design. When I got into that, I, you know, I used to airbrush photos for people and I, I did this. I mean, 
it wasn't as bad as like the Instagram chicks I'm talking about, but I used to push it to the limit. And then over years, I started realizing I don't have to do that. I, I just have to make a 10% difference here, 10% difference there, sharpen up this just a little bit, boom, you know, it looks good. So that that's just what I think. I don't think the people who are doing it don't know what they're doing. I think they know what they're doing, but I think they're very, this is my opinion because of what I know. I think they're very early in the process of like learning how to do this stuff professionally. So they think that taking everything to the extreme looks looks better um, and sounds better and, and whatever it is they, they want to do. But it, it just it just doesn't. <laughs> it flat out doesn't. And one day it'll hit these guys just like it hit me. Oh, I didn't have to do all that. You know, I just I just had to make little tiny adjustments and it's and it's going to look good. So um, I, I don't want to put anyone down that they don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, but I think there is a lack of experience that will hopefully improve in, you know, in time. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I think that like, um, you know, TV production is hard, you know, TV production is hard, um, especially doing things like being asked to edit pieces together and, uh, and, and, and turn things around, you know, on, uh, you know, short notice and, and like all of that stuff. It's definitely not easy. Um, and, and, you know, like you said, they could definitely just be trying some stuff. You know what I mean? They could definitely just be trying some stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think, um, I don't know. I, I think I, 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 the, the stuff about impact production that gets me is like, you know, really bad audio issues, right? When they go, when they throw to the back for the interview and it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like dog, like, you had time to set up and 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 go through sound check and all of that stuff. Like this should not be happening. It should not be happening, and it shouldn't be happening on something I paid you forty dollars for. You know what I'm saying? Like like that type of stuff is. It's just it's super annoying. It makes them look super unprofessional. Like that type of stuff, um, and it's and it's so consistent too. By the way, like again, yeah. there's there's a whole pre production process right? Like you get there, you get everything wired, you test it out so that when you go live, that this, this stuff doesn't happen. This stuff rarely happens on WWE. Why? Because they, they, well, partially because they have like a, they have like an in-house crew, right? Like they have people who travel with the team and do the production. Like a lot of places, like uh, probably AEW is like this. They, Turner Sports has like contracted uh technicians for all the technical stuff right and based on like what town they're in right like they just they they reach out to crews that they use in that area um but like wwe they have like you know like bob works on the lighting all the time you know like jim works on the sound all the time so he knows it like and and i, I bet you impact is is like that too right they're probably just hiring whoever's in the area but still man like somebody's got to be on quality control, man. Somebody's got to be on quality control. You got to check these things before, before they hit the air. Um, and I, I think that's, I think it is a fixable problem because they normally will fix these things. Like, I don't know, at some point in the show, but again, like, why do I have to wait an hour and a half for you to get it fixed? You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's yeah. for something I'm paying for, like that is annoying. That is unexcusable. And that's one of those things impact absolutely needs to do better. As far as like, you know, when it comes to, to post-production stuff, like editing video packages and, you know, the look, working on the look of the show, like, I don't know, I can excuse a lot of that because I think it's hard to create a show that just looks different. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, like, so, so, you know, things like the oversaturation of, of, of certain colors and, and stuff like that, like, it doesn't necessarily look great, but I think, like you said, I think a lot of that could be like, hey, we're just trying something. And I'm totally cool with that. You know what I mean? I'm 100% cool with that because I'm like, again, you got to try stuff. You got to try stuff because that's that's how you get good. So, so yeah, I mean, like, I I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not down on the production. Um, I'm down on like the little like game day production issues. You know what I mean? Like the- Yeah, right. 
you, you know, the stuff that the stuff that can be fixed behind the scenes that shows up on live TV. I agree with that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, if Josh Donald Hill is asking if Josh Alexander is your number one face and Moose is your number one heel, then who is second or th- looks like he's asking who's the second and third face and heel in the company. So I don't even think he's just asking top two. He's asking top three. So we'll, we'll figure this out together. So if Josh is not your number one baby face, who, who do you think is the next two in line as top baby faces? I'd say W Morrissey. I think we're getting there with him, even though what they're doing with him right now is not good, but. Uh, no, I think what they're doing with W Morrissey is great. Really? I think it's great. Yes. And let me tell you why, because this is the same reason why I love squash matches is you give, like, uh, speaking of squash matches, um, Masha Slamovich is growing on me, bro. She's growing on me because why? They're doing the Goldberg. And the Goldberg works. It worked once. It works. It works every time. Like, it just you just, if you show the fans that this person is a killer who doesn't get paid by the hour, I'm here to, you know, whoop ass and get out. Like, it works. It works. Um, and, like, when you hear that, like oh shit somebody about to get beat up yeah you know and uh and so like so again but why 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 does that work it works because as a fan i know what to expect i know what to expect when i hear that whistle i'm like oh who's who's in the ring oh buddy you know what i mean like so um and 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 by the way something like that doesn't have to be the championship it doesn't have to be, you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a feature act in, it's not a feature act, but it's a, it's an act that the audience knows in and of itself. And it builds the, it builds the character. Right. Um, and, and so with that said, I love what W Morrissey is doing, like just coming out and, and chasing Brian Myers or power bombing Brian Myers or power bombing, you know, whoever is in his way, whatever poor unfortunate soul is in his way at the time he comes out to power bomb somebody. I like it. I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I think it's, <laughs> um, it's, it's like, it's, it's great because again, when, when we're getting to a point where like, and by the way, I was, I was sitting here, you know, ideating on how, how impact can get some more pops out of the crowds. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. And when that W Morrissey music hits, people are like, ah, somebody about to get power bomb. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and like, it, 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 it's, it's, it's easy. It works. AEW is doing the same thing with Wardlow right now, right? Like his thing is he just power bombs the hell out of people until like, you know, they burst into flames. And so, and what are people doing? They're going crazy for it. They love it. So like, again, it doesn't have to be some long drawn out thing. I like what they're doing with W. Morrissey. And I would agree with you that he's probably the number two baby face right now. And even though, right, even though he's not necessarily in a story, um, in a story like trending towards a title, he's probably the second most popular uh, baby face. I think they personally have him, I mean, purposely have him coming out and doing these short segments because he'll get more more over than Josh Alexander if he gets too much TV time. I think that's what they're purpose like they're purposely not giving him math. Like, okay, so you're you're saying people are popping for it. I don't particularly care for it, but because I it's at this point I'm like, what are you doing? Where's it going? But that's just what I think. I think they are like, hey, if this guy's on TV too much and he's wrestling, he's gonna get more over than Josh. Because again, I, I think Josh even though what he's doing is good, is is his Mic work and promos and all that stuff is getting better. It's improving. His matches are always good. But I do think fans are, are latching on more to like, okay, he's our, he's our guy finally. So by default, I'm going to really like him. And, but I think that if W. Morrissey was on TV more, that he would organically pass him. I, I, think, I think that's, I think that is, um, I think that's, that's, that's I think there's, there's something to that, but I also, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that like, I, I, I don't, I don't think impact is in a position to uh, cut someone's legs out for the greater good of somebody else. Yeah. Because, 
Because like one thing that WWE does that I hate is like in the uplifting of you know one character, they will completely minimize all the other characters, right? Like I absolutely hate that. Uh Impact doesn't do that. Like there's nobody who they treat like Roman Reigns. Nobody. And so like, so like Impact, they they I don't think they're gonna minimize W Morrissey to make Josh Alexander look stronger. Like I don't I, I just I think if anything, you keep building W Morrissey. And if you need, you know, if you need to transfer that that you know uh that credibility with the audience, then you do a match with Alexander and Morrissey. You know, right. like I, 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 I think that's that, that that's what you do. But I think the one thing you don't do is you don't take away something that's growing on the audience. And like again, Morrissey's not getting those pops yet, but it's gonna happen if yeah. they just keep doing this. I'm telling you, I am telling you, because it's wrestling. We like violence. Give it to us, <laughs> you know. Like give it to us swift, you know. Again, like don't don't uh make it fun, and you know don't don't drag it out too much. Like we don't need a whole big setup. Like we know this guy's here. We know somebody's about to get destroyed. Let's do this. <laughs> so like that's wrestling in a nutshell. Like so um so I think Morrissey is is a good pick for the W uh for the number 2 baby face. All right. So if he's 2, we would say 3. It's probably a distant 3, but you would say Trey Miguel's in a conversation. Not I don't think it's him, but he's in the conversation. Rich Swan's in the conversation, but they hit, didn't keep him hot. I mean, we, we talked about how much the Kenny Omega stuff really hurt him. Um, yeah, Sammy Callahan. I would say Sammy Callahan right now, as I'm thinking of the people in my head, is like probably default number three. Like when he returns, he's going to be, it's going to be we big. Are going to Sammy Callahan, who hasn't been on MTV, uh, MTV, who hasn't been on Impact TV in months. Yes. Then like, that's a huge problem. I, like, I, I right. would, he would have to be disqualified from the conversation because he has, like, come on, come on. I okay. mean, like, he's very popular, but, like, he's not in any story. We don't know when next time we see him. We don't know if, if he'll be a, a baby face or a heel, right? His his The way he naturally comes off, he could be either at any time. Yeah, but people usually yeah. return as baby faces. True, true. But, but look at Team Impact from a couple of weeks ago. Um, you're talking Rhino. It's not him. Heath. It's not him. Oh, Willie Mack. It's not him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they had Rich Swan again. Rich Swan's in the conversation, but right, uh, they choose chose to cool him off after the title for whatever reason, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. after making him like a like a fool to Kenny Omega, right? Uh, it's one of the few times in, in the in wrestling that like booking has legitimately like hurt my soul, uh, mm-hmm. watching what they did to him. So, I, I don't know, man. Um, I, I would have thought Trey Miguel was trending that way, but. It's like right now he's an afterthought in his own feud as the champion. Yeah, I I'd probably say definitely for um for the men, Trey Miguel would be number three. Um, but like I think um I think uh I th- I think uh speedball Mike Bailey is not there yet, but the way he wrestles, I think you know, with just a little bit of a, a little bit of grease, right? Just a little bit of attention, he can he can quickly be you know right there in that space totally agreed um so if moose is the top heel uh this is a very heel heavy roster um man i I would put jonah up there even though i don't really understand what is he's flat out said his priorities new japan so i don't again we don't know who's signed who's not whatever but i feel like he's there Uh, everything he's been doing is really good really impressive uh, the other people in the conversation, Steve Macklin's in the conversation. You don't like him. Um, you have a lot of pretty quality heels, but it's, it's, I don't know that they're, because we've talked about when Josh wins a title, there's no shortage of opponents for him. Like there's definitely opponents. Um, could they, does anyone think they're going to beat him? Probably not. But, you know, I would have said the honor no more guy, I guess Eddie Edwards, number two. I mean, how could he not be? But I think they cooled off Honor No More so much after it being one of the reasons you wanted to watch the show. And now, like, this last week, like, I made a comment on Twitter. I said Honor No More was the coolest part, you know, one of the reasons people 
I don't know what the hell I said, but I was inferring to it being one of the main reasons people watch the show, and now it's just it, it's whatever. You know, and one guy responded, um, he's not a listener, so I can say this, but he just responded, oh, well, you're entitled to your opinion. And I said, what was your favorite part about Honor No More this last episode? And he didn't respond to me because they weren't on the freaking show. Right. So, you know, and you can't say PCO because he's clearly not part of it. I think Eddie did pop up or something like that, but it's, I don't know, man. When Eddie made that turn, it should have been like, yo, I can't wait to tune in this week to see what Eddie Edwards does or what he, he says, you know? It was just like, now he's just, he's a bad guy. Your top, your, your biggest heel turn happened, and he's just another wrestler on the show, it feels like. So, but I will say he's probably number two as a heel. Um, and then I'll say Jonah, number three. I don't, I'm trying to think if I'm missing someone here. Jay White would be if he was on more. That's 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 like the the tough thing too, right? Like, I think um, <clears throat> like with Bullet Club, right? Like, I think they hover too much in that heel in that in that cool heel space. Um, mm-hmm. it's tough to boo them, and it's tough for me to call somebody a top heel if if you can't boo them, right? right. Um, like Jay White again, like Jay White is really good, right? He's really good. Um, but I feel like I haven't seen him heal enough. I've seen him come out, do the, you know, we're bullet club and we're cool thing a a lot, but I haven't seen him actually heal enough for me to call him like a top heel. Right. And they'll cut a promo that they're waiting for the crowd reaction and the crowd pop in between breaths or whatever. I mean, they, right. It's all cool heel shit. Yeah. So like, if we're talking about like who is just doing great heel work, um, you got to put EY up there. Like his heel stuff is always, uh, is always top notch. And I think like, but I think the real question we're asking is like, in terms of like, who's a big deal or not. Right. Like, I I think, I think that's like, I think that's kind of where he's trying to get to. Yeah. Um, I, the, the number two to me would be Jonah, right? Like most of the top, like Jonah has been killing people. Um, like, I feel like I need to, I just want to keep seeing Jonah in big matches. We need to get Jonah and W Morrissey in a match and like triple reinforce the ring slash cage, like whatever. Like, I feel like people are going to get destroyed if we get a match with Jonah and Morrissey. Like, I feel like that's, that's just got to happen. Like there needs to be like a gauntlet and they need to be like the, the last two or something. We need to do something where we have a match with Jonah and Morrissey that doesn't happen like for a while, like maybe they both qualify for a match and then we just get weeks of building and anticipation for this match. You yeah. Know what I mean, like that'd be fun. I'm over the PCO Jonah thing, like, you know, whatever. Um, also, <clears throat> I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me. I feel like um, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, like to me, <clears throat> I'm so interested. I like, I'm waiting for them to do something with them. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so interested in their act. Like, like, it seems like, like you said, like they were here on the honor no more thing. Okay, cool. That's basically fizzled a little bit. Like it felt like, here's what I think actually is probably going to happen. I'm going to say this too, because it feels like we're waiting for something to happen with honor no more. And here's what I think will happen with honor no more. I think Josh Alexander is going to have Moose beat. And I think honor no more is going to cost Josh Alexander uh, that championship. And then I think we're going to get Josh Alexander versus Honor No More as a detour leading to, you know, Josh Alexander and Moose once and for all at Slammiversary, uh, either Slammiversary or, or Bound for Glory. And so, um, so um, yeah, I think, I think Honor No More is going to heat back up here soon. But I just think that like the, the OGK, man, like it's just like, they, they to me, it seems like there's so much there. Like, you know, like play the hits, right? Like I was watching WrestleMania and, and, you know, two nights in a row, they ended with, um, they ended with, uh, I'm sorry, one night in a row, they ended with Stone Cold uh, against Kevin Owens in a match. And then the next night they had Stone Cold come out and just stun everybody before the Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar match. And I'm like, dog, of course we know what's going to happen when Stone Cold comes out? Like, we right. know 
exactly what's going to happen. We could probably script it all out. You know what I mean? We could probably like mime it out in front of the TV as it's happening, right? Like we know what's going to happen, but it's still so much fun. I say that just to say like, yeah, we know what Matt David and Mike Bennett and Maria are. It's still good. It's still good. Let them do their thing and let us enjoy it. So I think that like, that to me, they're, they're a group that like, it's tough to like put them in that third slot, but they're they're probably like the third thing I'm most interested in seeing. I'm interested in them doing more with the Bullet Club, but that's like, that's very hit or miss with me. So, you know, I think Impact has a lot of acts that they, that they can heat up, um, but I definitely put Jonah number two as, as the number two heel right now. Uh, number three is, you know, we're getting into like a, a, a bit of a crap shoot there. Um, I'm not sure exactly who it would be, but I would say this. Let me just throw a little, um, a little, a little uh, curve in the conversation here. I would put Mickey James as the top baby face for, uh, for the women. I think what she's done since coming to impact for this last run has been phenomenal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Phenomenal. Like she has breathed life into everything. Yeah. Think of the people she has elevated just in since being here, right? Like her feud with Deanna Perrazzo, that, added credit to Deanna Perrazzo to a, to an already outstanding year that Deanna Perrazzo was having her feud with Mickey James added, added even more, right? She's elevated Tasha Steeles. Now she's elevating Chelsea green. Like bro, Mickey James low key MVP right now. Like she's she, like, like the, 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 the whole impact knockouts roster is so much more interesting because of the stuff they've done with Mickey James. Yeah. Yeah. She's the knockouts division has been in like really, really up and down as far as them being interesting. Um, you know, we talked about since, you know, Kylie Ray left and, and, you know, they had a hard time replacing that or replacing her hard time replacing Taya for a bit, but Jordan Grace has stepped up quite a bit, but yeah, Mickey James has breathed a, a, a lot of life into it has a lot of star power. Uh, and, and it's it's genuine star power. Like at first when the good brothers showed up, I'm like, man, they got a lot of star power. And then I was just like, eh, well, it's not genuine. And now they're just other dudes on the roster. But she comes in and people really genuinely react to her. And, mm-hmm. you know, and she has such success of doing stuff on such a large stage that it's, you know, she shines on this stage in a way that others don't. I brought it up. I, I mentioned with Alberto El Patron years ago, man, like, as unlikable as he was, um, you know, I, w- I was at a, f- a few of the tapings. He come out, man. The crowd is loudest for this dude. He just knew how to get them um, engaged in a way because he had had to do it with thousands and thousands. So for him, getting 200, 300 people to get into the show was was child's play. You, you know what I mean? So I think I see, I see that with Mickey James too. So... Um, I think we're going to cut it there. I do have more questions, but um, I got to get ready for work. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Um, I would say, man, for everybody out there, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We took a, a nice little dive into, you know, a few different topics. You know, please, please, please drop your questions in the Impact Lounge engagement group. Um, BQ, tell the people where they can find you out here on social media. And these uh, questions we missed, we'll get to them next time, promise you. Um, but um, I'm at BQ Speaks on Twitter. And you can find me at TW Talking About on your social media of choice. You can also follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod on Twitter. Um, also, I just dropped a new pod, just uh, doing a, a quick little dive into the journey of Cody Rhodes back to WWE. Um, uh, go check that out you know like rate comment and subscribe please 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 i love you mm. all right um but that's all we got here for now um with this show please like rate comment subscribe hit the notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new comment content on this page for bq i'm tw peace